Hi again, it's Dave Michaels with Classical Numismatic Group, and we're in part two of collecting the 12 Caesars in gold. Uh, if you think today's political environment is tough, just be glad you're not living in the first century AD. It was truly a blood sport back then. Not too many people came out of it alive. Now we left off with Nero's sad demise, this fellow right here, May of AD 68. Uh, with his overthrow left no obvious successor uh, since the whole Julio-Claudian line had gone extinct. And so this led to a year and a half long free-for-all by Roman generals. It's known as the Long Year or the Year of the Four Emperors. And the first of these was Galba. He was the 73-year-old governor of Spain. He was a stern old aristocrat, and he thought his prestige and his family name and his reputation would carry him through, would ensure his power. He was wrong. His strict economy measures uh, alienated just about everybody, including the one group that he could not alienate. That was the Praetorian guards, the imperial soldiers that guarded the emperor's person. Uh, they turned on him and uh, met him out in the forum in January 15th of AD 69. They cut off his head and his regime uh, at only six months. Now, you'd think that his coins would be extremely rare. Uh, they're not as rare as you might think, but they all are, are pretty rare. Uh, a decent Galba Aureus uh, is going to run you probably the low end, $7,000 to $10,000. Uh, that's for a find of EF example. If you're talking EF or mid state, it's going to probably be well over, well past the mid five figures into the low six figures. Next in the year of the four emperors comes Otho. Uh, he was a former drinking buddy of Nero's. He was a pampered playboy, rich aristocrat. He bribed the Praetorian guard to murder Galba. Uh, this accomplished, they next hailed him as emperor, but he immediately faced a revolt by the legions in Germany. It had already been going on and uh, in favor of their governor, Vitellius. Uh, there was a short, sharp civil war. Uh, it went against Otho, the first battle, and rather than stick it out and fight away to the end, he decided to open his veins, end his life, and his reign at only 99 days. That was the briefest reign of all of the 12 Caesars. Uh, his coin portraits, uh, Otho has a full face and a suspiciously helmet-like head of hair. Uh, this is actually a wig. Uh, Suetonius confirms this, uh, Otho had a peculiar hatred for body hair, and he shaved himself and depilitated himself uh, so that he had to wear a wig. Um, this is another key coin in the 12 Caesars set, because as you can imagine, aurei of Otho are quite rare, only 99 days to strike them. Um, examples grading only fine to VF can still sell for $15,000 or more. Uh, if you're wanting one in EF condition or more, think mid to high um, six figures. The record is $260,000 at auction, uh, but I'm pretty sure that others have sold for quite a bit more than this via private treaty. After his victory over Otho, the governor of uh, Germany, Vitellius made his way back to Rome at the head of a procession that was more like a nonstop long drunken party. His seven months as emperor were uh, just one orgy of decadence. Uh, it even put Nero to shame, and it further drained the state coffers so that uh, a revolt led by Vespasian, a general in Judea, uh, that deposed Vitellius in December of 69, probably saved the Roman Empire from falling apart completely. Now, like Galba, Vitellius struck gold coins in Spain and in Gaul, uh, in addition to the one struck in the city of Rome. Uh, his coins all depict him as being tremendously fat, grossly obese, uh, which is a visual sign of how low things had sunk in the Roman Empire since the time of Augustus. A uh, VF example of a Vitellius gold aureus will bring $7,500 to $10,000 or more, um, depending on the portrait style. Uh, one in EF is going to probably fetch higher than 50k. Uh, a, a truly choice EF will probably be more than $100,000. Uh, a year mint state, think double that. Uh, next is the 10th Caesar Vespasian. 
Uh, at last, we get a little dose of sanity here. He is a tough soldier uh, from a middle-class background. He established the Flavian dynasty and brought Rome uh, a much needed time to recover from all of the madness of the previous few years and the few re previous few reigns. He put the empire's finances on a sound fitting. And uh, as a result, uh, in his, he reigned for 10 years, there are quite a few gold coins of Vespasian still available. They're not uh, hard to come by. However, there are some very interesting reverse types. Um, most of them, most of the most highly sought after ones have to do with the Jewish war, which is the war he was fighting when he was called away uh, to uh, become emperor of Rome. And his son Titus completed that war and the Judean reverse types sell for a premium. Uh, a regular Vespasian gold aureas with a uh, more generic reverse type will sell for between $1,500 and $3,000 and find a BF, maybe a little bit more than that. On the other hand, someone paid $338,000 at auction uh, for a Vespasian aureus with a Judea divicta. Judea is conquered reverse. So that shows you how far things can go. Titus was the son of Vespasian and more or less smoothly uh, succeeded his father. He was generally very popular during his brief reign, uh, even though there were a number of natural disasters that occurred, uh, like the eruption of Vesuvius, uh, that buried the city of Pompeii and uh, left it for modern archaeologists to dig up and marvel at. Uh, gold aurei of Titus are fairly common because they were struck not only during his own two years and some months of reign, but also during the 10 years of his father's reign uh, when he was heir apparent. So you generally would expect to pay a little bit more for a coin of Titus than you would of Vespasian uh, in Find a VF condition, we're talking three to $6,000 uh, for a choice VF or an EF example, maybe ten to $20,000 EF is going to be 20000 or more. And an Aureus of Titus holds the world record uh, for any gold coin of the 12 Caesars. That's $800,000 uh, for a, a Titus Aureus with a rare Judea Divicta reverse that was sold at auction. Uh, that's just, and that's 800,000, that's the hammer price. You have to add the commission to the top of that. Well, next, the last of the 12 Caesars is Domitian. And that was Titus's younger brother. Uh, he finally got his chance to rule after Titus died uh, of a, a sudden illness, only a few, uh, two years and a few months into his reign. Uh, Domitian was of a sort of a dour personality. He was like Tiberius in that. Uh, he was a talented administrator uh, he actually, uh, the Roman Empire was actually fairly well managed during his 15-year reign uh, until the very end when suddenly he grew paranoid um, and Rome descended into a reign of terror that was only ended by his assassination uh, on the 18th of September in AD 96. And that brought the era of the 12 Caesars to a close and opened the door on the next era, which is the time of the five good emperors, um, but that's uh, another story and one we'll address in a future edition of Classical News Mismatics. Gold aurei of Domitian are not terribly rare. Um, the reverse types are kind of uniform, though. They almost all depict this lady right here, Minerva. That was his favorite goddess. And so Minerva appears in a variety of different poses, sometimes her bust, as you see here, uh, on his coins. You can get an aureus of uh, Domitian for maybe... Four to six thousand dollars and find a VF, and if you're talking um, higher grade, similar to Titus, ten to twenty, maybe north of twenty. Uh, a record price for a gold aureus of Domitian is just over a hundred thousand dollars. That's it for our survey of the twelve Caesars in gold. Uh, once again, all of the coins that you've witnessed in this presentation are in the Triton Twenty Four auction, CNG's Triton Twenty Four marquee auction. Go to our website, cngcoins.com, click on the 20, Triton 24 link, and you can see all of these wonderful coins and many, many more. Once again, it's Dave Michaels for Classical Numismatic Group saying Ave, Adque, Vele.